Well, I was having a bit of an uh, issue here with when everything's uh, together here, the holes I drilled out are, are a little on the tight side. Okay, and that's the final dimension on this one. And so I'll have to clean that one out just a little bit. But what I decided to do then was instead of drilling at the final size, uh, I went out and got a slightly smaller bolt and a couple of drill bits, 7 16 And so I'm going to do the initial drilling and the holes and that stuff for this and use this bolt to hold it together. And then once everything's tacked, drilled, welded, whatever, tacked or welded, uh, then I can come back through and I can just run through all four at the same time with the final size drill bit. And then everything, this bolt will just slip right through. Don't have to fight it at all. So, uh, And part of the reason it does that is because as you go around a laser cut hole, you can see it's not perfectly round. Uh, and the heat zone isn't exactly the same either. So when you're drilling through, um, it will tend to wander just a little bit, okay? And so between the four parts, you know, the hole is slightly off here and there kind of thing. But uh, um, down the road, this this batch of 10 uh, sets or whatever, th this will probably be it. Uh, I don't know that I'll have any more done. <clears throat> but uh, I didn't want to have the whole laser cut to final size for the exact same reason. Um, and this is actually a little too big. I think I've talked about this once before, but uh, when you've got a big big pilot hole like that, it needs to be down closer to eighth of an inch, three sixteenths. But then the laser cutter has a bit more trouble with that, uh, especially on this. The, the hole really, from what they've told me, I shouldn't go with a smaller diameter than the thickness of the plate. So I could put a quarter inch pilot hole in there. But when it gets so close, you know, it's so easy for the bit to wander around. Um, and granted, I'm using a bigger bit than this, but that kind of gives you an idea what I'm talking about. You know, a smaller hole would, would hold that in there. You know, this is, this can... Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do about that. I think what I'm going to do, too, uh, is uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to prep all of the all of the parts. Okay, and by all of the parts, I mean all of these parts. So I got enough for uh, six sets total. Okay, three are here, so that means I'll be able to do three more. So a bunch of the prep work is, you know, drilling the hole out here, uh, the other one, you know, all of the shock mount ones. Here, I've got to go back and, and find out what size that's uh, supposed to be. That's got to get drilled out for the uh, uh, tension control rod. This part just needs a little deep burring right around here where it's got to fit in. Uh, they picked that corner right there to, to uh, start and stop. And, uh, you know, almost any place other than that would have been better. So now i got to grind that nip off there. All right, this is how I drilled the other ones out, too. Basically, I'm getting the clamp just close enough so that it will stop it from yanking out of my hand kind of thing. Um, and then I have it set close enough that it'll it'll float around just a little bit. So that ought to work just fine. It did on the other ones. And I'm also making sure I go in on the top side instead of the bottom side because there's a bit more heat-affected zone here. Uh, this side should be a little easier on the drill bit. up a little jig uh, more or less fixture I guess is more accurate uh, I need to I want to put this bevel in here okay and I could do it on the grinder uh, you know it'd be nice to do something a little bit more predictable uh, this one was done on the grinder well what I uh, what I'm looking at here is this is only a five inch vise I put this stop back here basically I tucked it down into the pocket of the vise here 
uh, so it'll that holds the bottom basically. Then I took this little right angle and put it to the angle I want, okay, and then clamp that vice stop in here. So I don't need this anymore. Basically, I should be able to just go from part to part, tuck it in the pocket, pull it up against it, tighten it up, and then I can put the end mill down and come in, cut over, and back out. We'll see if it works. This works. I have to go slow and easy. Whoa. That's not slow. You can definitely tell when it gets through the the laser cut, the hardened edge, and gets down to where it's making a uh, more of a full cut and just the mild steel. So that uh, that comes out looking pretty nice. Okay, and that's so it clears the shock better and allows more tilt. If uh, if it was all the way up here, without the recess or the bevel, it would stop here. We're getting over an extra quarter inch of throw. And pretty much quarter inch. Which, you know, at the top end, get an idea how far of a... You know, that's close to an inch, maybe? Uh, more accurate would be to measure it in degrees, but, you know, it's uh, just not that important. The extra clearance is important, just like going back, just like I have uh, that recessed ground in there. Uh, I may end up doing something similar with all the arms before I uh, start putting them together, if I can figure out a, a mill, a way to put them in the mill easy enough. So, looking nice enough. So, uh, you know, I've got it set up. It's slow and tedious to do it, but they're coming out nice. I like them. So I think I will just go ahead and leave the mill set up like that and knock out the last uh, seven rather than worry about trying to find a different way. Because the reality is, is you know, when the CNC is uh, up and running and everything, my plan would be basically I could 3D contour this, you know, with a ball end mill or whatever. Or I could also set up a jig, you know, to... To hold it in the vise the same way I did and just tell it to cut that radius out. Um, and then I wouldn't even have to have it round. I could have it, you know, more of a rectangular pocket. Uh, this is what I can do for now, so this is what I'm going to do.
I can live with that. Alright, you can't see it from that angle, but basically what I did was I figured out the angle I needed, basically the same angle the other parts were cut at. Uh, same fly cutter, same diameter. Uh, slightly less diameter. I took a chip off the end here, but it's still cutting, so <laughs> i got two more arms I'm pushing through. Uh, I set up some stops here so I can kind of get the angle, and when I had it set up, I drew a couple lines to tell me how on the vise and pencil to, to show me how far to go in and uh, kind of double check the uh, angle there. So oh. I just kind of give it a little eyeball. I need it semi close to level, but it's it's just for clearance as long as it's roughly centered. Here, I'll show you. So there's two of them. You know, and they're close enough, you know. I mean, that one goes down a little more than that one, but uh, it's just some shock absorber clearance. Uh, it's it's as deep as the, the other. Again, it was a choice between doing it on the grinder or doing it on the mill, and it's a whole lot easier to do it on the mill. Uh, even though it's an interrupted cut, I'm using the cheap cutter. Uh, you know, so I don't care. And I set my zero mark for to get me roughly the depth, and that's eyeballed against that pencil mark there, basically. But then I back out to about 150, and I take several lighter cuts. Way too birdie.